Tonight we begin our Lenten Reflection Series, and tonight we have with us Mr. Paul Yarzembowski, who has dedicated more than 20 years of his life to youth and youth ministry and evangelization. He has worked in youth and young adult ministry on the parish, the Cariot, and the Ossesan level, in the Archdiocese of Chicago, and the Diocese of Juliet. In addition to having spoken in and consulted with over 250 parishes, dioceses, and Catholic organizations. Mr. Yarzembowski holds a master's degree in pastoral studies from Loyola University, Chicago, and a bachelor's degree in theology and communications from Valparaiso, Valparaiso University. Currently, Mr. Yarzembowski is the associate director for the laity, for the Secretariat for Laity, Marriage, Family Life, and Youth at the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops. Mr. Yarzembowski is an author, blogger, and speaker. He has written on the issues of evangelization, young adults, and ministry issues in a number of journals, blogs, and publications, and has been a syndicated columnist for Faith Catholic Magazine, for which he won a Catholic Press Association Award in 2011. Paul's specialties include youth and young adult ministry, an active Catholics, faithful citizenship, the new evangelization, first years of marriage, emerging Catholic leadership, and Ignatian spirituality. Recently, Mr. Yarzembowski published a book through Paulus Press entitled, Hope from the Ashes, Insights and Resources for Welcoming Lenten Visitors, which will be available for purchase and to be signed by Paul outside the Crypt Church following his presentation. In light of his new book, the title for tonight's reflection is Hope from Ashes. Please welcome Paul Yarzembowski. It's good to be with you this evening. For the past two decades, as you have heard, I've worked in the church's ministry with young adults parishes, college campuses, dioceses, religious communities, and since 2013, across the street at the USCCB, engaging this ministerial field nationally and internationally. As you can imagine, in all those years, I have seen my share of disappointment and frustrations. The evangelization and accompaniment of young people is no easy task. And as disaffiliation increases with each passing year, this work gets even harder. In those two decades, I have tried to persevere and have cried out numerous times in prayer, why, O oh Lord, aren't young people coming to church anymore? When, O oh Lord, will the trends begin to reverse? How long, O oh Lord, must this crisis of disaffiliation go on? Yes, there have been many efforts developed through the years, but despite them all, the trends seem to go in one direction, downward. Less engagement, less attendance at Mass, less participation in the life of the Church, less interest in parish life, and so on. Now at this point, you're probably looking for the easiest way to slip out the door, as this doesn't sound like an uplifting Lenten reflection on hope, but rather the rant of some guy who is complaining about the state of things in his work, in the world, in the church. But wait, this is where things start to turn around. Despite these sobering trends we are living through, there is really some good news. There is hope. Every Ash Wednesday, as you probably have likely seen, our churches are flooded with people. Studies on church attendance have tied it with Easter as the second most attended day of the year, just behind Christmas, and it's catching up. Researchers have found that we double Catholic engagement every Ash Wednesday. So from 20% of, ad of adult Catholics who come to church weekly, to about 40% who receive ashes 
each Ash Wednesday. And among young adults, those under the age of 40, the difference is even more staggering. It jumps from 14% who come weekly to 41% who will come on Ash Wednesday, on that single day. And many of those who are returning, who returned to us last Wednesday, are those who don't otherwise come to church. It includes those young adults we don't normally see. It includes those who consider themselves spiritual but not religious. It includes those who are disaffiliated from or hurt by the church. And it includes those from marginalized and oft forgotten communities. As Jesus said in the gospel today, ask and it will be given to you, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be opened to you. In other words, last Wednesday, we began our journey with ashes and many of our hopes and prayers were answered. But God in his goodness does not stop there. The numbers get even better the further we go into Lent. While on average 20% come weekly, and on average 40% receive ashes, over 60% abstain from meat on Fridays and engage in some sort of Lenten practice in their homes. Let's think about that for a second. 20 becomes 40 becomes 60% on Fridays in Lent. This incredible trend means that tomorrow, a Lenten Friday, you and I will be joined by millions and millions of men and women in our shared experience of Lenten fasting. It's amazing to think that wondrous connection we have to one another every Lenten Friday it's also a great reminder that we are not alone, as alone as we thought in our annual Lenten journey. It seems that every Lent, there is a great awakening that takes place. Now for those of us who daily devote ourselves to the church, to accompanying young people and those on the margins, Lent then takes on greater significance. It's a wonderful opportunity for moments of encounter with young adults, with those on the margins, and with those who are disaffiliated. Now we may have missed this because we often do Lent alone. When we think about this season, we often focus exclusively on our resolutions, our devotion, our almsgiving. I mean, it makes sense since Jesus does tell us to go into our inner room and pray. And when we alms, give alms and fast, don't let your right hand know what your left hand is doing. We heard it loud and clear last week on Ash Wednesday, as it's the gospel every year. In that same reading, Jesus concludes with this line, your father who sees what is hidden will repay you. How true that is. What has been hidden is now made known to us through this phenomenon. The hidden gem gives me incredible hope, emerging from ashes and fasting. As to why so many connect in Lent and what we can do to respond, I won't go into too much depth since I, I wrote about it in my book. There are so many fascinating reasons they connect, and there are so many creative opportunities for us to respond. As the title of my book suggests, I am hopeful what will happen in the ashes, in this and every subsequent Lenten season. But what I will offer you today is a starting point, grounded in the readings from last Wednesday. The first reading of Ash Wednesday was from the prophet Joel, who proclaimed, blow the trumpet in Zion, call an assembly, proclaim a fast. For this is the moment of great return and reconnection. People are open to God at this time of year. There is a desire to journey with Jesus in Lent, especially those who have been more distant from a community of faith. God challenges us through Joel to wake up and for our communities to step up and to welcome those who are reconnecting, whose hearts are a little more open to God's grace. 
And just as the Lord was stirred to concern for the land and for his people in that first reading, we are called to be stirred to concern for those who are seeking Jesus this Lent, those who are looking, longing for love, tenderness, and mercy that only Jesus can offer and only his community, the church, can provide. The second reading on Ash Wednesday was from St. Paul in his second letter to the Corinthians. He said, brothers and sisters, we are ambassadors for Christ, as if God was appealing through us. St. Paul implores us, we appeal to you not to receive this grace of God in vain. The Lord is about to appeal through us, to work through us as we encountered new people this season, guests, newcomers, visitors, in our churches and in our homes. God is about to work through us when we talk to our sons and our daughters, our families and friends, our brothers and sisters, and any others who are not as active in a church or with a faith community, but who are accompanying us in our Lenten fast and through ashes. St. Paul says, let's not receive this grace, this wondrous, hopeful grace each Lent in vain. Let us not be cynical, judgmental, or indifferent to this miracle of encounter and sincerity. God, St. Paul said, is challenging us to be his ambassadors, his emissaries, as God wants to encounter all of those on the margins of our society and all those on the margins of our churches with radical hospitality, patient tenderness, unconditional compassion, boundless mercy, loving warmth, and great humility that flows through us as his ambassadors. However, God needs us to be his instrument of healing and peace in the lives of those who we perhaps did not know but are journeying alongside us in Lent. These are our children, our grandchildren, the people in our work, the people in our neighborhoods, the people in our schools, those we see at stores, the subway, the streets, everywhere. Let me conclude this reflection with the psalm response from Ash Wednesday, which coincidentally was also the verse before today's gospel, because it reminds us of our role in this great and wondrous hopeful phenomenon. As we heard proclaimed, a clean heart create in me, O God, and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Give me back the joy of your salvation and a willing spirit sustain within me. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. So just as the psalmist says, create a clean heart within me, we want to move through Lent with a pure and generous heart one uncluttered by our prejudices and judgments and cynical outlooks on those who are otherwise disconnected. And just as the psalmist said, open my lips and my mouth shall proclaim your praise, we are invited to speak with kindness and gentleness of Christ to those who feel uncertain, unworthy, exhausted by life and overwhelmed. We speak this way as ambassadors because perhaps we ourselves feel uncertain, unworthy, exhausted, and overwhelmed. And God can think of no greater instrument to use to convey that mercy and love than those who have lived it themselves. We want to speak as Jesus spoke in the Gospels, like that passage in Matthew when he says, Come to me, 
all you who labor and are heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. And just as the psalmist said, a steadfast spirit renew within me, a willing spirit sustain in me, we are challenged to be intentional in our encounters, but also patient with others, persevering and recognizing that the journey for every person is unique and that all will truly, fully, completely reconnect with the Lord and his communities of faith in God's good time. And just as the psalmist said, give me back the joy of your salvation. Oh, that is a wondrous thing to hear in Lent. We don't often think about it as a season of joy, but it is. We are encouraged to see Lent as a graced moment of hope when we get to encounter our brothers and sisters, many of whom are distant from us in new and exciting ways by joining our Lenten fast with theirs, even that which is hidden. We wonderfully discover that we're not that different from them after all. We are all on a journey towards the Lord. So let's never do Lent alone again. Lent is what I call a thin, what the Irish call a thin space, when the veil between heaven and earth is thinner. And people, especially young people, and those who are disconnected, draw a little closer to God. And let's do our part to accompany one another towards Jesus Christ. This is where I find hope from the ashes in my work. And I pray in your way that you also find your own hope, your own joy, dare I say this Lent, in your own lives, in your own ashes. In that, I believe that we can find and become for each other hope from the ashes. Thank you very much. And I pray that your Lenten journey forward is a wondrous, hopeful, and yes, joyous one. God bless. We thank Paul for his energetic and hope-filled messages this evening. And we invite you to join us again next week for the second of our series, which will be next Wednesday evening, March the 16th, with Dr. Susan Timoney from the Catholic University of America, Encountering God Through Prayer, Fasting, and Almsgiving. And for those who wish, Paul will be outside in the, uh, outside the Crypt Church, and there you can purchase his book or speak to him as well. Thank you for joining us, and have a good night.